Hello and welcome to setting up a Linux virtualization in a Windows operating system part 2. If you have any questions whether or not you can or should set this up, please see part 1. It goes through the pros and cons of this tutorial. Before we begin, back up everything. Along with doing some backups, um, if you're a Windows user, uh, I strongly encourage doing a system restore point. Um, I'm not going to go through the steps on how to do that. I'm assuming you know how to do that. Uh, but in the event that uh, the installation goes poorly with a virtual box, uh, then you can uh, quickly uh, uh, restore back to that point uh, before the installation. Start up your web browser and go to the following site, uh, virtualbox.org. <clears throat> on the main site, uh, we're going to go immediately to downloads. And this demo shows using uh, Windows, uh, in my case Windows 7, as the host. Um, if you are using a Mac or Linux, uh, click your appropriate download. Uh, but for this example, we're going to grab the Windows uh, download. So just save the file, and just remember where you save the file, and we'll launch the program later. Okay, after your file is done downloading, we need to install the program. So uh, just find wherever you saved your file and double click it. And then the uh, wizard should start up. Uh, you're just going to click next. Of course you accept. And um, here uh, I recommend installing these. Um, it'll help out uh, a lot later. Um, what these do is these are little uh, virtual box applications um, which uh, really uh, add to uh, your experience. So um, we're going to install those. Uh, if you want you can create a desktop shortcut or a launch bar shortcut. You know you choose. Uh, that's fine. Uh, network interface. Okay so this is basically saying that um, your network connection will be reset. Um, you know uh, that's fine. It's part of the install. I'll just say install. So this will take some time and uh, just let it go through the install uh, and that's pretty much it. Okay, eventually this window will pop up. Uh, would you like to install this device software? Um, yes, we do. And again, another uh, window should pop up uh, about your network adapters. Yes, we want to install this. And another uh, window will pop up. Uh, yes, we want to install that as well. And another one install. Okay, and eventually uh, you will come to the finish. Um, if you want, you can start it up now. Uh, I'm just going to not start it up at the moment. Okay, now just launch your VirtualBox application that we just installed. And uh, you may have to cancel the registration uh, window, that's fine, but eventually you should come to a window that looks quite similar to this. Uh, the only difference is you probably won't have anything here, this will be blank. Uh, this is my Linux operating system that I've already created um, that I don't want to mess with because uh, I like how everything is configured. Uh, however, uh, for us, uh, we're going to create new. So um, it's nice, it's a guided uh, tour of all this, so just click next. Uh, name, this is what um, will show up uh, in that little box over there. My first one was called Linux. This I'm just going to call Demo. You can call it Ubuntu. You can call it whatever. Uh, here we need to select our operating system. Uh, again, just select your operating system. For this demo, it's going to be Linux. And we are using Ubuntu, but as you can see, it has a nice list of all the different flavors of Linux out there. Uh, so uh, we are going to use Ubuntu. Uh, mine is 32-bit, so I'm not going to select the 64-bit. Click Next. Okay, here is how much memory we want to dedicate to our uh, uh, guest operating system. Um, I'm lucky, I have four gigs of uh, memory. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, I'm gonna give a thousand. Um, if you only have two gigs of memory uh, and you're running Windows Vista, uh, you may wanna give something more like 512 to the guest operating system. Uh, Generally speaking, Ubuntu doesn't need uh, a ton of memory uh, like Windows, so um, 5.12 should work fine for that scenario. Just click Next. Okay, at this point we have to create uh, some space on our host operating system. 
Um, if uh, you already had something that existed, which all users watching this probably don't, you could use an existing hard drive. Um, however, uh, since you have nothing, uh, we're going to have to create a new hard drive. So just leave the default, click Next. And uh, here you have to make a decision. Dynamically expanding storage uh, means that um, as our operating system gets bigger, uh, your uh, host uh, uh, area will also increase or decrease depending on how much room you need. Um, my thinking is that this affects uh, performance of the guest operating system. I don't know if that's true, but that's just my thinking. Um, so I have actually picked fixed size storage. Uh, the problem with fixed size storage is if you guess too big of uh, space that you want to allocate, you're just wasting space. If you guess too small um, and you need more space, uh, you're kind of screwed. So, um, you know, again, pick accordingly. Here we need to pick a place where we want to save this. Uh, by default, um, it is going to be saved uh, this path. Um, I'm just going to leave it as default because this is just a demo. I may end up deleting this later. Um, but if you want to change where you want to save this, uh, feel free. Um, you know, it, that is totally up to you. Um, and then uh, if you do dynamic, I'm not sure what happens if you pick dynamic. I think uh, it just picks the default size and you're fine. Um, and uh, since we, or I did fixed, um, then I have to say how much I want to allocate. So I'm just going to do uh, 20 uh, gigs. That should be more than enough. And then just say next. Uh, say finished. And now this will actually uh, take some time, but this will actually create a, um, uh, a .vdi file. Uh, which is basically uh, your virtual box. Um, and this is where we will actually install the operating system into. So um, now I haven't really experimented with any of this uh, uh, since I'm kind of new with this. Uh, but my thinking is uh, later on, if you take this file that's created uh, and just back it up uh, if you want to, um, then you've just backed up your entire operating system. Um, and then remember later when we chose the existing, um, you could just point to that and uh, boom, you could just be right back to where you started. All right, once this is all finished up, uh, just click finished. And that's pretty much it for now. Um, what you can do, uh, you can click settings. So anything that we've already kind of uh, uh, set up, uh, you can always uh, adjust uh, accordingly. Um, and, uh, you know, I recommend reading the manual or documentation to see if there's anything else you want to tweak. I'm not going to go through all this. I don't have time. Um, but um, I am going to bump that up. Uh, and this all depends on your system and your hardware. Um, but if things start crashing a fair amount on you, um, you'll definitely want to take a look at your settings uh, to make sure that they're not set too high. At this point, our virtual box should be configured and ready to have the operating system installed into it. Uh, again, I don't know what operating system you're going to be using, uh, but for the demo, we're going to be using Ubuntu version 9.04. Uh, if you have any questions on how to acquire this operating system, uh, please see my other video, Rescuing Files Using Ubuntu. Uh, you can watch the first uh, few minutes, and that explains how to grab the operating system. Um, next, we're going to install the operating system in part three of this tutorial.